CDC bird flu alert. Why human cases have suddenly dropped in 2025. Welcome to the official Global RPH YouTube channel. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to stay updated with our latest videos. Whether you're looking for medical insights, the latest healthcare trends, or fun educational content, there's something here for you. Despite a widespread avian influenza H5N1 outbreak in the U.S. since 2022, the CDC reports a surprising decline in new human infections in 2025. As of May 30, a total of 70 human cases have been confirmed, 41 linked to dairy cattle, 24 to commercial poultry, 2 to backyard flocks, and 3 to unknown sources. Four individuals required hospitalization, and one fatality was reported in Louisiana. Encourage recent infection rates appear to be falling. The animal impact remains extensive. Since the outbreak began, over 169 million commercial and backyard birds have been affected, along with 1,049 cattle herds across 17 states. While the virus continues to spread among animals, human to human transmission has not been identified. From March 2024 to May 2025, public health authorities monitored approximately 16,800 individuals potentially exposed to infected animals. Of particular interest is a recent study showing that 3 out of 150 veterinarians working with cattle tested positive for H5N1 antibodies despite being asymptomatic and raising questions about undetected exposure and immunity. CDC surveillance remains active at least 880 individuals have been tested for novel influenza A viruses, but clinical data and ER visits for flu-related symptoms show no unusual trends at the national, state, or local levels. Although the decrease in human cases is promising, experts emphasize the need for continued vigilance. The transmission pathway from animals to humans is not fully understood and ongoing monitoring is critical to detect any changes in the virus's behavior or public health risk. CDC surveillance systems used to track bird flu in 2025. The United States uses several advanced surveillance networks to monitor avian influenza patterns in 2025. These connected systems provide health officials with comprehensive data to track bird flu cases that spread between humans and animals. U.S. Influenza Surveillance System Overview The CDC runs what experts call the strongest avian influenza surveillance program in the world. This layered approach tracks virus activity throughout the year, with several systems working together. The network's foundation includes about 300 clinical laboratories in all 50 states, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the District of Columbia. These labs report influenza test results through the U.S. Influenza Collaborating Laboratory System, or the National Respiratory and Enteric Virus Surveillance System. They act as the first defense to detect both seasonal and new influenza viruses, including possible bird flu cases. On top of that, the flu serve net system watches for laboratory-confirmed influenza hospitalizations in specific counties across 14 states. This covers about 9% of the U.S. population. The network recorded 39,244 laboratory-confirmed influenza-related hospitalizations between October 2024 and April 2025. From these, 37,602, 95.8%, linked to influenza A virus. This wealth of data helps public health officials spot differences between regular seasonal flu patterns and possible threats from avian influenza strains. Role of National Syndromic Surveillance Program, NSSP. The NSSP plays a vital role in the CDC's bird flu monitoring system. It automatically collects electronic health record data from more than 6,500 U.S. healthcare facilities. The network covers almost 80% of emergency departments in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and Guam. The system watches both symptoms and diagnoses as they happen, which helps quickly spot unusual illness patterns that might signal bird flu 2025 outbreaks. NSSP data tracks the weekly percentage of emergency department visits related to flu diagnoses, 
While these visits include all flu diagnoses, not just H5N1 bird flu, they help set normal flu activity levels to spot unexpected increases. This early warning helps public health officials decide where to focus their investigations when strange patterns emerge. NSSP found that emergency department visits with flu diagnoses stayed steady at 0.3% during week 20 of 2025. Wastewater Surveillance via NWSS for H5 Detection The National Wastewater Surveillance System, NWSS, offers a fresh way to track avian flu through environmental sampling. The system now checks influenza A virus in samples from more than 700 wastewater sites across 48 states. Tests happen one to three times weekly. Results go to CDC weekly and add extra insights beyond clinical surveillance. Wastewater surveillance has its limitations for tracking the spread of bird flu to humans. The data can't determine whether detected viruses originate from human infections animal sources, or animal products, such as milk from sick cows. CDC documents state wastewater data cannot determine the source of influenza A viruses. Detections could come from a human or an animal, like a bird, or an animal product, like milk from an infected cow. And despite these limits, CDC's bird flu monitoring through wastewater proves valuable for early detection. Early 2025 researchers found high H5 and influenza A levels in wastewater samples from four treatment plants near H5N1 outbreaks in dairy cattle. This showed that wastewater monitoring can provide an early warning for outbreaks likely to produce contributions to the sewer shed. Drop in human cases, what the data shows. CDC's coordinated monitoring shows H5N1 infections dropped remarkably among exposed populations in 2025. The data gives a detailed picture of both monitoring scope and infection rates across different exposure categories. This information helps public health practitioners and researchers understand the situation better. 16,800 people monitored since March 2024. The CDC worked with state and local health departments to track potential human infections. Health authorities monitored about 16,800 people who had contact with infected animals between March 2024 and May 2025. This represents one of the largest surveillance operations ever conducted for a disease that spreads from animals to humans. About 9,300 people had exposures to dairy cows, the other 7,500 were monitored after contact with birds and other animals, including commercial and backyard poultry. This split in exposure types shows how the current outbreak affects both bird and cow populations. The CDC has been gathering data on human exposures in the United States since April 28, 2022. This long-term tracking helps public health officials spot patterns in exposures and infection rates. Health authorities tested at least 880 people for novel influenza A viruses from the monitored group. They used standard protocols as part of their targeted surveillance strategy. The tests covered 218 individuals with exposures to dairy cows, 670 individuals with exposures to birds and other animals. The results showed apparent differences between the two groups. People exposed to dairy cows had an 18.81% positivity rate, 41 positive results from 218 tests. Those exposed to birds and other animals showed a much lower rate at 3.58%, 24 positive results from 670 tests. The National Influenza Surveillance System tested more than 179,000 specimens between late February 2024 and April 2025. They found six H5 cases. This shows that routine surveillance still catches cases, though fewer than in previous months. No unusual trends in emergency department visits. The CDC hasn't seen any unusual patterns in emergency department visits related to influenza or similar symptoms at any level, national, state, or local. This suggests H5N1 isn't causing widespread illness in the general population. The monitoring system combines targeted checks of exposed individuals with broader population screening. 
This creates a strong framework to detect any changes in how the virus spreads. Right now, despite the virus being common in animals, people aren't showing unusual flu activity. Only one person from Colorado showed genetic material of the H5N1 virus among 161 symptomatic individuals tested for both novel and seasonal influenza viruses. This person felt tired after helping with poultry culling but likely didn't have an actual infection. These findings support the CDC's view that the risk to the public remains low. They continue to watch for any signs of human-to-human -human spread or genetic changes that could make the virus more transmissible. New analysis shows different patterns in how bird flu H5N1 affects people who come in contact with various animals. The findings give an explanation of how the virus spreads and reveal gaps in our current monitoring systems. Since April 2024, the virus has been identified in 336 commercial and 207 backyard poultry flocks, affecting over 90.9 million birds. However, three human cases had no clear exposure history, indicating limitations in current tracing and surveillance efforts. Why the numbers are falling? Key contributing factors. The drop in human H5N1 cases in early 2025 appears to be the result of multiple reinforcing factors. Environmental trends, seasonal influences, and strengthened public health measures. A clear decline in H5N1 infections among animals, particularly in dairy cattle and birds, has directly reduced human exposure. According to the CDC, new cases in animals continue to emerge but at much lower rates than in late 2024. California, once the epicenter of the outbreak, with roughly 75% of the country's dairy cattle cases, has reported no human infection since January 14, 2025. Human testing numbers support this trend. Over 50 people were tested monthly in late 2024, compared to just three in March, one in April, and none in May 2025. Seasonal migration patterns and reduced exposure. Bird migration plays a critical role in the spread of highly pathogenic avian influenza, HPAI. Migratory patterns influence the timing and geography of outbreaks. The virus typically surges in fall and early winter, when wild birds, key vectors of H5N1, are most active. CDC experts emphasize this seasonal pattern during recent briefings, and surveillance data from Europe reflect a similar slowdown. With only 743 HPAI detections between December 2024 and March 2025, as migratory movement tapered off, so did virus transmission. Better agricultural safety protocols have helped stop virus transmission. Farms have increasingly adopted biosecurity measures to prevent disease entry. Workers now clean and disinfect parlors, equipment, clothing, and vehicles thoroughly. They also separate sick cows, limit farm traffic, and use proper PPE. CDC's respiratory protection guidelines now include NIOSH-approved particulate respirators, fitted safety goggles, and disposable fluid-resistant coveralls. USDA has helped boost compliance by offering financial support for better biosecurity plans, free H5N1 testing and shipping for samples, veterinary services, and protective equipment. These complete measures create multiple barriers that stop pathogens from spreading between animals and humans. Limitations in current surveillance and testing. Bird flu surveillance systems in 2025 show declining cases, but major gaps in detection methods might hide the real number of human H5N1 infections. These limitations raise concerns about how widespread the virus might be among people who face exposure. Underreporting due to asymptomatic cases. Studies show that people without symptoms make up a large portion of undetected human cases. A CDC study of 115 dairy farm workers found that eight people, 7%, had signs of recent H5N1 infection. Half of these workers couldn't remember having any symptoms. A similar study of 150 vet practitioners showed that three vets, 2%, had H5N1 antibodies, yet none reported any flu-like symptoms. These findings challenge the CDC's focus on monitoring only people with symptoms.
One infectious disease researcher pointed out that people are being infected likely due to their occupational exposures and not developing signs of illness and therefore not seeking medical care. The current count of 68 confirmed infections likely shows just a small part of the real picture. Real-world obstacles make it hard to test high-risk farm workers properly. By May 2024, federal officials had tested just 40 people linked to U.S. dairy farms, even though the dairy industry employs about 150,000 workers. Most farm workers don't have health insurance or sick leave, which stops them from getting tested or treated. They also worry about losing their jobs or facing immigration problems if someone finds out they're infected. One expert summed it up. If a worker tests positive, they'd likely be instructed to go to a clinic, then stay home from work. They couldn't afford to do either. Language barriers exacerbate the situation, as many workers lack sufficient information about the disease in their native languages. Wastewater surveillance helps detect early cases, but has clear limits when tracking human infections. The CDC states that wastewater data cannot determine the source of influenza A viruses. Detections could come from a human or from an animal like a bird or an animal product like milk from an infected cow. H5N1 viral RNA found in community wastewater could come from infected humans, animals, or facilities that process animal products. Current tests can only spot viral RNA without showing if the virus is still active. These limitations mean wastewater monitoring works best as an early warning system rather than a reliable way to measure human infection rates. Conclusion, balancing optimism with continued watchfulness. Human cases of H5N1 have declined significantly in 2025, marking a positive shift in the trajectory of the bird flu outbreak that began escalating in 2022. This decrease is likely driven by multiple factors, a natural drop in animal infections since January, seasonal bird migration patterns reducing transmission routes, and stronger biosecurity measures, including better personal protective equipment use among agricultural workers, which have effectively limited zoonotic spread. Despite these improvements, current surveillance data requires careful interpretation. Asymptomatic infections detected in dairy workers and veterinarians suggest that passive monitoring may underestimate true infection rates. Additionally, economic and immigration-related barriers prevent some farm workers from accessing testing, leading to potential underreporting. Wastewater surveillance, while useful for early detection, cannot clearly differentiate between human and animal sources of the virus. The CDC continues extensive monitoring with over 16,800 individuals under observation for potential exposure and at least 880 tested for novel influenza A. So far, no unusual patterns have emerged from emergency department visits or laboratory data, indicating no widespread symptomatic transmission in the general population. However, H5N1 remains widespread in animals affecting 169 million birds and more than 1,000 cattle herds across 17 states. While the public health risk remains low, the presence of the virus in multiple animal reservoirs underscores the need for continued vigilance. Public health professionals should approach this apparent improvement with caution. Asymptomatic human infections raise concerns about undetected transmission chains, and the limitations of current surveillance systems leave gaps in our understanding of the virus's spread. As seasonal shifts can trigger new waves of animal infections, health authorities must maintain high alertness and strengthen surveillance tools to capture both symptomatic and asymptomatic human cases. Continued investment in comprehensive monitoring and rapid detection is essential to stay ahead of this persistent threat. Thanks for watching our Global RPH production. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. We're bringing you a dynamic mix of content across a variety of topics, so there's always something fresh, engaging, and insightful just for you. Your support means the world to us. It helps us grow and keep delivering exciting, high-value content. Stay tuned, because the best is yet to come.